Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 and a brand new experiment today where we're taking a look at what would happen if you had the perfect team in non-league football and with the Gibraltarian national side. So as you can see, the team we've gone with, Tombridge Angels in the Vanarama National League South. The reason I always use England is that it just has more tiers available than any other nation that I'm aware of. So it makes sense because we get more promotions out of it. It's a bit more interesting. Um, but we have picked Gibraltar as a national side. You can see uh, they're not exactly the best team in the world. 2,226 capacity and only 32,000 people in their population. But they now have the 12 best players in world football all at their time, all in their team. Current world rank ranking of 199. If we look at that ranking, uh, it kind of cuts off at 211th. So... Uh, pretty much near the bottom of that table, uh, their next game against North Macedonia in a friendly. Uh, so we'll see how the team gets on there if they bring these players up. But we are going to keep these players at uh, Tombridge Angels. So you can see that they all have future transfers arranged until the year 2050. So they'll be at this club either until they retire or until 2050. I imagine they will retire before they get to that point. Uh, so they should be with Tombridge Angels that whole time. Now, there may come a point about 10, 15 years in the future, if they're just winning every game, regardless of the opposition, we might want to terminate their contracts and then see where they go. They'll still all be joined together by the Gibraltar team, uh, but it might make it a little bit more interesting if we do get to that kind of saturation point where they're top of the Premier League, winning the Champions League every year. It just makes sense to let them go and see what happens next. Uh, but they will all be getting paid about £200 a week. That's not going to change. That's just how much money they are. But everybody has the same stats. You've got two excellent strikers up here in Tom Derry uh, and also Jason Williams. They do have past histories, uh, but I'm sure we'll be able to tell when the new experiment kicks in. But they've all been set to a very young age to get a full career out of them. Um... And at the moment, a lot of them have no value whatsoever. But because they've got a future transfer, they can't be poached. So they will be here for a long time. The only thing that's different, obviously, the keeper has different stats. But they're all set to maximum everything. The same as with our best player and best goalkeeper experiment. But we're going to see it on a much more industrial scale this time around. So what we're going to do today is we'll jump a couple of seasons ahead to begin with. Might even go further than that. We could go three, four seasons ahead, see how they get on, how the team does, how Gibraltar does, uh, and if any of them are starting to win the Palon d'Or, and which ones of them are. And obviously the interesting thing to see as well will be how many goals the strikers get now they've got a perfect team backing them up. And also how these players get on being supported, uh, supporting this team in this squad amongst everything else. It's going to be really interesting to track how the club does, all the rest of it. So we'll go about four years ahead, then we'll probably go another six years ahead, then we'll go to the end of their career, keep it to a three-part experiment so it's not uh, too long and drawn out. Uh, but it should be quite an exciting one. I'm looking forward to this. If you are looking forward to it, make sure you hit that like button down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Uh, and drop a comment if there's something you'd like to see that I don't show you in this part of the experiment. Uh, so let's jump forward now. We'll go four years ahead. I've decided we're going four years ahead uh, and we'll take each season at a time and then see how these players are doing. Well, we are now four years into the future or five years into the future. I might have gone one step too far, but you can see that this is the start to their time. Now, you might get used to seeing an awful lot of green as we go forward. In their very first game, they did win 5-0. Another one 5-0 against Loughborough Uni, then an 8-1 result. But Carl Warren actually managed to score past them which is a little bit interesting. Unfortunately, we can't see the team that they put out there, uh, but it looks like it was pretty much a full-strength team in that 8-1 game. Um, but a few goals going in, and then they got a 14-0 victory. Uh, Jason Williams, one of the strikers in the team, getting five goals in that game. And then their first ever competitive game with this perfect team, a 9-0 victory over St. Albans. And that kind of set the trend, 8-0, 6-0, 5-0, 8-0. Um, they actually... Didn't fail to score five goals until the first game in October. So that's a long run, scoring a lot of goals. But they did concede a goal. Archie Johnson with it. He's not even clickable in the game at the moment. Uh, played for Welling United. But their run, absolutely smashing it, even in the FA Cup. Uh, I mean, it's qualifying rounds, but just firing through that. 4-0 over Oxford United as well. 
eight nil over Haven and Waterlooville, then a seven nil in the trophy. Uh, three in the FA Cup second round after a four one win against Grimsby. Uh, Jamie Soule getting a goal there for them, um, but they're not conceding many. And you can see a nice 10-0 win in the league, even though they went down to 10 men. They then beat Accrington and Stanley 3-0 in the FA Cup third round. They beat Manchester City 3-1 in the FA Cup fourth round. So we know exactly what level this team is at. Zinchenko scoring for City, but a 3-1 win for Tombridge Angels. A 9-0 win in the league after that game. There's a few 9-0 wins in here. Uh, they beat Hamel Hempstead in the fourth round of the FA, uh, FA Trophy. Uh, but fifth round of the FA Cup, a 4-1 win away from home against Stoke. Uh, FA Cup quarter final, a 5-0 win away from home against Wolves. Um, and still going in the FA Trophy. Win the FA Cup four, win the FA Cup semi-final 4-0 at Wembley. Only 3,516 away fans in a 90,000 attendance. But they've beaten Man United 4-0 there. Um, they win the FA Trophy 3-0 against Woking and then win the FA Cup 3-0 against Everton while winning every single game throughout the entire season. Now, I know that's not a surprise, but what is funny is they've won the FA Cup. That means they're going to be in the Vanarama National League and the Europa League. If they win the Europa League, they will be in League 2 and could be Champions League winners in League 2. So that would be... Quite a nice little surprise. Now, if we have a look at the National League South um, and look at the league table way back in this season, 42 games played, 42 victories, 256 goals scored, 16 against Samuel Hempstead, 16 against Billericay Town, three conceded, Weymouth, Oxford and Welling all getting the goals, but a 253 positive goal difference and 126 points. They utterly smashed the entire league, 42 straight victories, giving them the title, um, winning every single game. Now, if we look at the records for this, uh, we should be able to see player records. Um, most goals in a season, 42. <laughs> More than twice as many as anybody else. Most goals in a match by a player, 4. Uh, assists by a player in a season, 42 for... Tombridge Angels, clean sheets, top 39, highest average rating, 9.69. Uh, player of the match awards, 10. Actually, not as many as Alfie Brown managed for Brackley Town in the 2021 season that followed. Um, I'm not sure they'd be in the worst discipline or anything else like that, but absolutely destroying all of the records available there in the Vanuama National League South. Now, the following year, uh, they win the Community Shield for the first time, 5-0 against Manchester City after a good pre-season. What are their attendances like now? The attendance getting up to 2,761, but again, crushing every single game. They didn't concede for a very long time here. The Europa League campaign kicking off 3-0 against Dinamo Kia, beating Dinamo Zagreb, beating Espanyol. A 13-0 win against Spennymoor Town in the FA Cup first round. And then an 11-0 win against Wrexham. 10-0 against Billericay Town. They really are firing in the goals now. Um, FA Cup run, 5-0 over Oldham. Sheffield United, 3-0. Uh, Europa League knockout stages beat Lokomotiv Moscow. Only a 1-0 win away from home there. Uh, Jack Parter with the goal. A left back getting the goal in that game. Uh, and then a 5-0 win at home, seeing that one through. Uh, beat Lyon very comfortably in the next knockout stages. Uh, beat Milan, uh, well, beat Southampton 6-0, but then drew with Milan, actually. That's the first game they haven't won, and it was at home in front of 9,000 fans at Plough Lane. A one-all draw with AC Milan. They then had to go away, and it was actually quite close. A 2-1 win in the end. Uh, Jason Williams getting the goal that totally knocked uh, Milan out but then in the FA Cup semi-final they beat Burnley 4-0 6-0 over Chessfield 4-1 uh, over Arsenal and they actually lose for the first time ever so they won the first leg 4-1 Tom Brea with a hat-trick in that game uh, and then they lose 3-1 away from home against Arsenal so maybe there will be a few upsets in this experiment uh, no idea how they've lost that game 3-1 but I suppose it can just happen like that but they did win the FA Trophy 5-0 with a man sent off at half-time. And then they beat Man United only 2-1 at Wembley in the FA Cup. But then in the Europa League final, a 3-0 victory over Inter Milan. So they've won the Community Shield, 
the FA Trophy, the FA Cup, the Europa League, um, and the Manorama National League. A pretty good season all in all. Obviously, they won every single uh, game in the Manorama National League, so there's no big surprise when we look at this table at their top. 264 goal difference, three goals conceded again, uh, and 138 points, well clear of Macclesfield Town. Um, now, the following season into League 2, Again, it's going to start to look a bit repetitive, but they've beaten Real Madrid 4-1. Eden Hazard got one goal, but a 4-1 win for them in that game. Uh, and they're just cruising through everything, but they are in the Champions League now. Dynamo Kiev, again, they're now in the Champions League. 5-0 against Club Bruges, another 13-0 win, which I think is their club record. 11-0 against Macclesfield Town. Brushy Dortmund, 4-1 as well. Uh, Man City beating an EFL Cup, because obviously they're in here for the first time. Now they're in the Football League. Um... But cruising through absolutely every game, a nice 12 0 down here. They did concede against Club Bruges in the Champions League. Um, but into the EFL Cup semi final, beat Wolves easily in both legs through the EFL Trophy South semi final. And then Atletico Madrid, 7 0 victory away from home against Atletico Madrid, followed up by a 3 1 win at home. Um, they actually lose the EFL Trophy final to Liverpool 4 0. What on earth happened there? I can't get the fixture up. But what is that? How have they lost to the Liverpool under-23s? They must have played a very weakened team to lose that game. I don't know how that's happened, but they've missed out on the EFL trophy as a result. Uh, they do keep going in the Champions League, beating City 6-0. FA Cup semi-final, 4-0 against Arsenal. Champions League semi-final, they beat Inter 3-1 and then 4-0 at home, picking up the FA Cup 3-0, and then they do win the Champions League 4-1 against Real Madrid. So they are League 2 winners, Champions League winners, FA Cup winners, and F EFL Trophy runners-up. I don't really understand what has happened there. They've utterly dominated absolutely everything that season. UEFA Super Cup in there as well. But it means they're into the Club World Championship for the following year. So you can see another perfect run here. We won't spend too long on this. But Community Shield wrapped up in League One. Super Cup wrapped up as well. Champions League absolutely flying. No major surprises in there. Borussia Dortmund and Atletico Madrid as they fly through everything. And then they do lose to PSG 2-1 away from home. So they are coming up against some proper opposition now. Um, through in the EFL Trophy trying to get some... Uh, redeeming kind of victory from that. Uh, they beat PSG 4-0 though to get through in the Champions League, beat Lyon 5-0 and then 4-1 into the semi-final, 3-0 over Man City uh, and then 1-0 at home. They do go through the League 1 campaign unbeaten, well winning every game. They win the FA Cup 2-1 and they do win um, the Champions League 3-0 against Manchester City. They also win I mean, Liverpool under-23s are absolutely their nemesis here. Now, it does look like they're playing a weakened team. This is not um, a full-strength team by any stretch. Where's that gone again now? Um, the extra time win. There we go. Well, they also took an extra time to get past Spurs in the FA Cup, but um, it's it's not a team made up of their best players. I mean, you can see where their best players are. Uh, James Folks with a 9.4. Jack Parter at left-back. Tom Derry in there. Um, so they only actually had three of their best players out in that game, which is why maybe they lost the previous year, because they nearly lost this one as well against Liverpool. Um, but the following season, another FA Cup in the bag, another Super Cup in the bag, 6-0 against Spurs. Um, flying through absolutely every game. Wins not by as big a margin as they have been previously, but they're getting up against bigger opposition. That is going to happen. Uh, but comfortably going through everywhere. They did draw with Real Madrid away from home there. Man sent off early on, but they still got the draw. Uh, Real Madrid actually had to come back from two down. Um, but a 4-0 win at home, 3-1 win in the FA Cup, and a 2-1 win against Liverpool. There does seem to be a bit of a rivalry brewing with Liverpool, it has to be said. And now na next season, they are heading into uh, the Premier League because they have won the Championship campaign now if we just have a quick look at this league table uh 46 games 46 wins 207 goals for them only nine against uh, and 138 points in the bag uh, i'll just quickly show you the table down in league one as well if we have a look at that one uh for the previous year 
you can see they won that 210 positive goal difference. So absolutely crushing it. Uh, not a surprise in any way that they are doing this uh, and also just this campaign. So you've got that. They only conceded two goals in that season, their best return yet. But you can see a beautiful little shot straight up in every competition, winning every league game. Not a problem. Um, I do want to have a quick look at their manager here because I think he must have been there pretty much from the start. Uh, and you can see with Tombridge Angels, 377 games, 372 wins, uh, two draws, three defeats, 1,820 goals for, 71 against, and a goal difference of 1,749. Win percentage, 98%, 22 cup wins, five league titles, and six promotions. Uh, he must have got a promotion. Oh, he must have led the team through to promotion the previous season. Um, but you can see he spent a lot of money, 223 million there. Um, but they're now at Selhurst Park. Uh, due to move back to 15,000 capacity Tombridge Angels Stadium after the planned expansion. And this is a new stadium they built in 2023 as they went up. But you can see their poor training facilities, average corporate facilities, um, and poor use facilities as well. So they've not quite been able to keep pumping the money into the team, Tombridge Angels, but they have utterly fired up the tables. Now, if we look at the senior squad of players, uh, they do have a little bit of value in here, but obviously their contracts will be expiring soon. This one expires. Uh, when's this one expired? Oh, it's already expired, so these need to be extended. Uh, they'll keep playing for the club until their contract expires, and then they may not play, depending on the other players in the team. Um, but you can see they've all got absolutely brilliant records. Joe Turner here. Uh, I mean, that's a fantastic return. He's a left midfielder and central midfielder. And yet he's getting over 30 goals every single year, regardless of what league he's in. A huge number of assists as well. And that rating is unbelievable. Now, one of the other interesting things in here is these players are listed by current ability. They have Kepa for them uh, in goal on 150k a week. They've signed him for £40 million while they're in the championship. And he was still Chelsea's number one. Uh, so their reputation has flown up as a result of all these Champions League wins. They'll have all this money coming into the club as well. Um, Evander in here, 26-year-old attacker midfielder. Justin Cliver is in here, uh, left winger, not even playing for them in the championship there because they've already got this perfect team. I mean, uh, Jonathan Henley here, maybe competing a little bit with Kepa for game time. But he should always be winning that battle. And these players are still only 19 or 20 years old. But they've got a lot of very good players that they've brought into the team now. And if we look at that transfer history, you can see £142 million spent on players this season. £71 million, £10 million. I mean, that alone would be a great way to bolster your way up the league table. But if we look at their club details, you can see reputation now up at pretty much 10000 So nearly as high as it can go. Uh, they are the most reputable club, reputable club in the world without even being in the Premier League yet. Um, club attendance now up at 17,000, but they still got a minimum one of 768. Uh, but they do have, how much money is that? That is 11.4 million. So not a huge amount of money and their facilities are still pretty crap uh, despite the move to the new stadium. So overall, they've been doing pretty well as a team. Uh, just to show you that manager has been there now for 10 years, there for quite a while before he actually joined the team. But you can see here, promoted from the Pri from Ryman League Premier Division via playoffs, and then the run of real beauty begins. Uh, but I just want to have a look at their best 11 over the previous few years. It'll be the same players time after time, but it's a good way to track their stats together. And you can see the most goals in the first season actually was their right midfielder, Jared Small, got 58 in 61 with a 9.66 rating. Nobody else bettered that. Uh, obviously, they had a player who got 22 of 20 because they do have 12 uh, players in the team that are perfect, not 11. So there'll always be one on the bench. And it was Tom Derry this year as they were playing with just one up front. And he got 44 in 44 with a 9.46. Um, but those are some excellent returns. Even the defenders... Here, a centre-back game, 13 and 50. Uh, 61 appearances for the keeper as well. Some other players getting goals as well. Ryan Barnett benefiting from it. The following year, uh, 60 goals for Tom Breer. Who got the most the previous year? It was 
uh, Jared Small the previous year, but the next season they did have uh, 60 goals for Tom Breer uh, and then 51 for Williams up top, 31 and 38 for Derry. Uh, but a few players all getting over 50. That's five players getting over 50 goals in the season. Uh, a 9.49 for Jared Small there. Uh, another really good return. The year after that, 64 goals for Tom Breer from central midfield. Uh, 58 for Joe Turner. And it was actually Williams who... I don't know, well, they both played quite a few games, but 43 and 52 and 47 and 60. It was actually uh, Tom Breer, though, with 64 goals in 81 games. Uh, but these ratings are just absolutely incredible. Much higher than we saw in the perfect player experiment. And the following year, 59 goals for Tom Breer, who really is unbelievable overall. The following year, 48 for Tom Breer. Terry, 49 for Joe Turner. Tom Breer with just 46 this time. But the other players not really getting much of a sniff. And then when we look overall, if we sort them, well, we can't sort them, uh, but 264 goals for Tom Breer in 339 appearances. It's not a goal to gate, a goal a game ratio, though. Um, I mean, these ratings are great here. 237 and 299 for Jason Williams. But that will be thrown off by the substitute appearances uh, shared with the other striker. Uh, but it really is a great return, even in midfield. 186 and 231 for Tom Derry there. Um, very high. 233 in 341 for the right back, Jared Small. That is unusual. That is a huge number of goals for him. He must be being played further up the field. Can't imagine he's actually got that many goals. Jared Small. Yeah, he's a central midfielder. I don't know why it's put him in at right back. Um, but there you go, maybe James Folks. Yeah, he's the right back, James Folks. With 40, still 42 goals in 323 games is not bad. And all these players still there. Some other honourable mentions in here. Calvin Phillips, currently at Cardiff, worth 34.5 million. Well, he only had one season, signed for 36 and then sold for 13. Uh, who else we got? Bernard Menzer, currently worth 25 million. He had a couple of years there after joining from Turkey and then uh, signed for a free. Still there now. Worth a bit of money. Uh, so a few honourable mentions in there. But what we, we really want to do now is go over to Gibraltar and have a look at their senior squad schedule going back to 2019. This was their 2019 campaign. Even after these players joined in, they were still getting smashed week in, week out because they hadn't actually signed up for the national side. They did get a draw with Andorra in 2020, followed by a 3-1 win over Andorra. But they still don't have those best players in there. 2021, they still don't have those best players in there, probably because they are too young as they fail to qualify for the World Cup. And then they hit whatever age boundary it is that you are allowed to play for your national side, because you can see here are the results. And then they sign them all up, and there's a 7-1 victory over Armenia in a friendly, followed by an 8-0 victory against Luxembourg. They do manage to lose to Andorra in the Nations League. I don't understand why. That would happen unless none of those players were in there. Maybe they're too young to play in the Nations League. But they come back to beat Azerbaijan 4-0 with a man sent off. They then beat Azerbaijan 13-0 to stamp their authority. An 8-0 win over uh, Antora. A couple of friendlies including a 14-0 win over San Marino. And then in the European Championship qualifiers you can see excellent victories all the way through this. Including against Turkey. They beat France 3-2 as well tighter game than you would think there um, and then beat France 3-2 at home as well. Tommy Hessian Harris is one of the perfect players but he's a central midfielder I wonder why I didn't recognise the name there 4-0 win over Israel, takes them up to the modern day where they got back to back double digit wins and are now in the European Championship and probably about to become champions of Europe. So if we look at the best 11, they have no records available but their records here uh, All-time top goal scorer is actually Sean Theobalds, the central midfielder. He's got 21 in 17 games for his country. Uh, but all of these records set by the team recently, well, except for most capped, which is Liam Walker, who's the head of youth development. If we look at that national team squad, it's no surprise who's in there. What is a surprise is you do have some players with decent current ability in here. Louis Annersley uh, in here, the centre-back, currently playing MK Dons. Uh, who else have we got? We've got Peter Kelsey in here. There's a few players with def decent uh, potential ability. And part of that will be because some of these players are greyed out. 
they will have to match the status of the nation they're playing in. Um, and you can see that they have risen up the world rankings, now 115th. That's about to absolutely spike as they go up, but their top players, not difficult to see where they're coming from. Uh, and Chris Maloney, what's your history? Uh, just been manager of Gibraltar since 2021. They didn't have a manager before that. Oh, no, they would have had a manager. We're just looking at the wrong wrong screen if we look at that. There we go. They had Julio Ribas in charge, uh, who resigned from the role probably just before the big players came in. Uh, and that is a terrible managerial decision. But Chris Maloney doesn't seem to have had much of a history, but he's about to become extremely famous. Uh, so I think that is probably going to be it for this experiment. We can have a quick look at the current ability of the players in the world, but a bit of a gap between Tom Derry and Kylian Mbappe in there, then Mo Salah in there, but nobody really able to touch the Gibraltarian players. Next time, we will go forward about another five years. We'll see how they get on in the Premier League, how they get on with Gibraltar, and then we can maybe think about releasing them from their contract and let them go to other teams. Let me know what you think about that idea down below in the comments. Make sure to drop a like on the video as well if you're new. Um, but until next time, see ya.